Okay, so I'm here to uh, show you guys how to make a picture with multiple clones or copies or overlays of you. See, in this picture, you see four of me, and it's I liked it. I, I did a lot of work. I'm not, there's one. There's only one issue. Is like right here, the cord disappears. If you look carefully, I'm not sure if you'll be able to see it on the YouTube, but the cord disappears, and it, there's supposed to be a cord there, but this reflection here makes people not realize and they, they kind of just ignore it so i'm gonna show you how to do this so you're gonna want to open up photoshop here you want to go file open what you're gonna do is you're gonna as you see in this picture there's four of me so what you're gonna want to do is you're gonna want to have a camera in a stationary position with controlled lighting so the light changes during any of the takes and you have a different lighted person which i'll show you how to deal with so you basically you're gonna have a timer stationary you want to pose for multiple different pictures and then you're gonna want to see those files on your computer here I just put them my my pictures and you're gonna want to uh, select all the pictures with them in for some reason I have a bunch of copies of it and I don't know why so you're gonna open them all and then you're gonna want to choose which one you're gonna have as your background your bottom layer so I'm gonna go with what is it this guy here yeah I'm gonna go with this guy because you can see the colors different and if we had them on the top, then he, it would just be so much trouble simply because of the color issues. And all the other ones have that nice orange glow to it. So you're going to take the second picture and hit Control A, which selects it all. Control C, which copies everything that you selected, which in this case is the whole screen. And layer one, you're going to hit Control V, which pastes it. And you want to do this over and over again until you have. until you have all those pictures in one stack of layers because you're gonna need you're gonna need them all stacked up like that there we go okay so let's disable all these by clicking the eye so that way only this bottom one here is visible now we're gonna we're gonna fix this we're gonna fix the color after we do our first layer mask now you're gonna want to create that layer mask by making it visible and you can see the square circle button here click that and that creates a layer mask it chooses what comes through and what stays behind this layer. So you see how in this box it's all white. Well, you're going to want to select a brush. Make sure it's a nice solid one. And then you're going to want to set it to black. Because black and white chooses how much it comes through and what stays. See, if you do this, then he's going to be opaque. If you set it to a grayish color. But we don't want that. So we're going to bring him through. As you can see, you can kind of see that greenish color poking through from the last picture, which really isn't that great. But you're going to want to keep doing this until every part of them is shown up there. And for now, we're just going to ignore the green issue, uh, as we're going to show you how to fix that afterwards. Alright, you want to quick, you know, quickly check, make sure I got all of that. Now you see that green picture. Now as I said, you're going to want to select the picture, not the mask. And then you go image, adjustments, color balance. You want to play with this until it's the right color. Now, no, I don't want that. Now as you can see, there's quite a bit of green. So we're going to boost up the red. Lower that color. Add some more yellow. Oh, what's going on? Oh, wait, wait, wait. Cancel. Select the wrong background. I want to select the background. I'm sorry about that. That's my bad. Anyways, color balance. I'm sorry. I'm using a pen tablet, so the pen thing keeps showing up, pissing me off. There we go. Add some red. Get rid of the green. Oh, add some green, I guess. I wonder if some of the yellow. Add some yellow. Take back that green. More blue. Bring in green. Uh, oh, I can still see some. Some red, red, add some more. Add some more green. Uh, just want to keep playing with it, really. Just get that perfect mixture. There we go. It's a little thing there. There we go. Now it's it's seamlessly. It's so it's virtually seamless. So now we got that guy in. And basically, what you can see is. The difference 
And you can see that right there, which is a bit odd. Oops. Right there, that's a bit odd. I don't know what that's about. I think that's just a shadow. Yeah, that's a shadow from the light. So maybe I'll bring the shadow on through. Let it continue, make it more blending in. Okay. Now we're going to want to make the next one visible. Now that's going to allow what this layer is. It's going to allow this layer to come through, which is also allowing this layer to come through. So basically, it, it's you got to redo every person every time. Oops. Undo that. So you got to create the layer mask. Then you got to bring them th on through here. Just make sure you have the layer mask selected, or else you're going to end up coloring the picture that's meant to be behind it. And don't go, don't like go crazy with it, because then this will happen. Make the guy disappear. He's gonna knock anybody balls. So you want to remove all that. There we go. Now try not to have the people too close to each other, because then you got a clipping issue where like they're arm to arm. And when it comes to the layer mask, you literally have to go in between their little arms and use them and just find the masking tool through. And it's it's just really a pain in the butt. It's, and it's not really worth the time, so. Well. <sighs> Let's see, there's a shadow. This guy's shadow needs to come through a bit more. So we're just gonna. There we go. Make it look like that cord disappeared, so. There we go. You know, I mean, you're not really always gonna get it perfect, but I mean, it's definitely a big step. Now we gotta get the tire guy over here. This guy's an easier one, I think. Now, if you notice the couch, as I'm doing this, it, it starts to shift. You see two different copies. So you just gotta keep doing that until it just blends right in. And if it doesn't wanna blend in, then you can always, you know, get a smaller brush, zoom in there, and just fine detail it until it just seems perfect. There we go. Now the final layer. Basically the same thing again. Layer mask it. And you want to copy him on over. I don't want to throw the shadow though, so I'm going to follow his head around just right there. All right, I'm going to go back in there with a bit of detail so that way I can try and keep that shadow in there. Once again with the couch. Do, do, do. Everything. Alright, and we'll go back here. The white. Bring that shadow back in. I'm just gonna I'm gonna copy it like have one shadow dominate the table. And then the, let the reflection take care of the act the uh there we go. Cause not really people pay exact attention to that so you're gonna use the scene to your advantage if you know what I mean like if you want to make it look real it doesn't have to be perfect and then let's see now we're gonna want to bring let's bring the drum guy over here work our way away from him for now so we don't have to worry about some issues right away so this is where you can really just go nuts with it just quickly do it all because you just bring up all three layers at the same time, so you have to worry about fine doing all the layers. We've got a little clipping there. Let's go back and fix that. There we go. We're gonna bring in the singer. Just once you get close to the other copies is when you wanna try and shy away from it, because this happens. Restore that. You can see I want that cord to disappear. I'll bring in that other cord while it just avoids his head. That way it kind of looks real. Use the glass advantage of the excuse why it look, doesn't look exactly right. Bring him back in here. And voila! Seamless, perfect clone copy. Now we're going to want to go back into that guy's head there, so we're just going to zoom in here. Thank you. Thanks to my handy pen tablet. 
And you gotta, you gotta remember what one belongs to what copy. So this shadow here belongs to that copy. So we wanna kinda do this. Now I'll just go right around him and try to not have him disappear. See, there's some issues with that blanket there, so I'm gonna make the brush size smaller. And just follow him around and make it seem right. There we go. Pull his head around here. Let the shadow show back up. Luckily, the background's brown, so if his hair clips a bit, you won't really notice it too much. Zoom it back out. And voila. And that, my friends, is how you create a clone picture. Now keep another thing in mind is that I'm gonna just do this quickly as an example. If you have the people in your picture too close up too close together then it's really going to make some issues because let's take this guy he's stuck there so I'm going to make him a layer from the background so I can move him around let's say this guy was over here right next to the guy playing the guitar right and we wanted to bring him in well, this is where your issue shows up because as you try to bring him in Oh, it's that white, sorry. As you try to bring him in, he gets really close, and then, bam, the, the other guy disappears. So you pretty much would have to do this the entire time, is just follow his body all the way in like this. And just try and follow the creases of his body. So try not to get them too close, or else you're going to run into that, that issue. And that's just a pain in the butt. And then once you're done, you can just save it as any kind of file type. Me, I always use JPEG. Save it, upload it, and watch people be amazed. That's my video tutorial. Thank you for watching.